Hello and welcome to my channel where we discuss the Power Platform. Today's episode, we're going to have a look at the PL200, which is the Microsoft Power Platform Functional Consultant. I'm going to be looking through a few resources um, in terms of how you can revise for the exam, any tips that I have, and then some actual content on some of the topics that could come up in the, um, in the exam itself. However, this isn't a video that will give you the entire content needed. So do make sure you um, do some other revision as well. This is just a quick video to introduce. So firstly at the top there, we have the Microsoft Learn documentation, which is great. Uh, lots of great videos on there. Um, it should not be the only way you revise, but it's definitely a go-to, and I've been using it quite a bit, uh, especially because there's questions at the end of each topic, which I, I find are quite good to, to test myself. And then you've got Measure Up at the bottom there, which I'm not being paid to, to market this or anything, um, but I found it to be very useful to use Measure Up to, to do, do revision. There's all sorts of different um, kind of exam material and dumps and things out there, and some of them kind of vary, and I find I find that they're, they're not very accurate. So going on to some, on to some topics now. The first uh, one I have here is to understand the difference between an embedded business process flow and an immersive business process flow. Now an embedded pr business process flow um, is kind of the, the normal one that we see in a model-driven app. They appear along the top of the app in their own control. An immersive one can sit outside and is built entirely with the Power Automate editor. So you actually go through to Power Automate and then you create the immersive business flow from there. So yeah, do understand the differences and some of the advantages um, that they can give us, which includes a simplified creation and streamlined management. The second one I have um, here, which I've seen a few questions and revision on, is the export op options when you go um, into Excel for a model-driven app. Now, when you click on this, but this button to export, you have open in Excel online. You have a static worksheet. You have a static worksheet, the page only, dynamic worksheet, and the dynamic pivot table. And there are different instances where you'd use these different types. So if you wanted to do an ad hoc or what if analysis, you'd open the data in Excel online. If you want a snapshot at the current date in time, you'd export to an Excel static worksheet. If you want the most up-to-date worksheet, but you want to refresh, that'd be a dynamic worksheet. And you want to view your data in a pivot table, as the name suggests, you'd want an Excel pivot table. So understand those differences and when you would use those. Dataverse, understand the differences between calculated and roll-up columns. Now, calculated columns are calculated in real time when they are ret retrieved. Uh, so, for example, an integer calculated column may reference values from decimals or currency columns. So it's like kind of when they're saved, essentially. Roll-up columns actually exist in the in database. They can be used in filtering or sorting, just like regular columns. They're calculated asynchronously by scheduled, scheduled uh, system uh, jobs. Um, so by default, they're actually updated every hour. So they actually exist in the database, whereas calculated columns are on the fly, as it were. Think about the different roles that you need for portals. So portals features quite heavily in this in this exam. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to give a contact the ability to use uh, portals, one way you could do that is by giving them a web role. And this kind of snapshot here talks about how you do that. So you open up portal management, go to portals and web roles, select new, enter the appropriate values and select save. So understand how access is controlled for portals. RPA, so the desktop flows are quite a thing that, that comes up. And there's a there are two types of flows. You've got unattended and attended desktop flow. So unattended is best for applications that do not need human supervision. So they're kind of running in the background. For attended flows, um, of course, you're going to be there and the idea is that whenever you add a desktop flow, you can choose whether you do it attended or unattended. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's taught you something or at least uh, got your head in the game for the exam. Good luck.
see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe.